This is the Bates Bobcast, our weekly podcast where we take a look at the week that was in Bates Athletics. My name is Aaron Morse, and this week we're celebrating another track and field All-American, plus previewing the NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships, where the most Bobcats ever, 13, qualified for this year's four-day event in Indianapolis. All that and more coming up on the Bates Bobcast. Senior Captain Elise Lambert and Junior Jordan Wilson traveled to Winston-Salem, North Carolina last weekend for the NCAA Indoor Track and Field Championships. Wilson placed 20th in the mile run, and Lambert earned her fourth career All-America honor by placing third in the 800 meters. And Elise Lambert is our female Bobcat of the Week. Going into the prelim, it really, it's just, it's, my focus was just running on the best that I could. I just, I knew if, as long as I did what I knew I could do and what I've done before, I I would be fine. So I was just looking to get the second spot and basically just do whatever I needed to do to get that second spot. I wasn't really sure how the first, the girl who was seated first was going to run it. Um, I think she, she had other events later in the day, so I wasn't sure she was going to be more strategic. But I was hoping that at least if it wouldn't be a strategic race and that if I was going to go, someone was going to go with me. So um, it was nice that she took the lead and it was it was a lot easier for me to just follow her, follow her lead, and um, go after her. So, yeah, I mean, going into it, I just I wanted to do my best and see how how fast I could run and just safely get it, the big Q, and I was happy to have done that. And then the final, I got a chance to watch the final live. Mm-hmm. I was watching, like, the girl from Messiah runs out. I'm like, okay, she's setting the pace. She's not going to keep this up. She just kept going. You were kind of battling for kind of third the whole time. When you have two runners going out like they did in the final, how do you avoid overexerting yourself to try to like stay with them, sort of? Right? Yeah, I mean, I've I've been doing this a long time, yeah. so <laughs> so I kind of know hard. just just to go my own pace and not really pay mind to the rest of the field. Um, there were some girls. I mean, going into it unconverted, my time would have seated me third in that race. Mm-hmm. So I kind of had a, an idea of where I wanted to be. Yeah. Um, and I knew that some of the girls who went out ahead of me were not probably going to stay ahead of me. Mm-hmm. So I was just focusing on staying within myself trusting my own fitness and knowing that um like looking for opportunities to make the moves to get back up into into a place where I wanted to be so and how'd that go kind of down the stretch because you there were a group of people you were kind of with that you were able to kind of outrace there at the end yeah I kind of slowly worked my way up I started I don't don't really know where I started but I remember passing some people and just really I was I was on someone's shoulder until the I was in fourth and on someone's shoulder until the last lap and then I was like okay it's probably time to go and <laughs> and make a move on her so yeah I was just um, just kind of focusing on myself doing my thing just running with it you know I've been training <laughs> for this for for a while now and, you know uh, Coach Jay's done a great job of preparing me so I was just trusting that I was ready and kind of went with it yeah it kind of seems like it there weren't it wasn't much of a surprise for you this is kind of what you expected. Yeah, I mean, I was. This is what I at least I was hoping for. Yeah. I'm definitely. It was it was overwhelming and really exciting to to place third, yeah. going in seated fifth. Um, and I wasn't. I don't know. I think I was at least expecting. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't mm. even sure if I was going to make the final going in. I mean, not, this sport is so such a mixed bag. Nothing mm. is ever. Nothing is ever uh, guaranteed. So I was excited to make the final, and after that, I was just hoping to at least uh, beat my seed and stay in the top five. So it was it was a pleasant surprise to be able to pull off third, and um, yeah, it was really exciting. What was the environment like at indoors? I mean, obviously it's a massive meet. Uh, there's lots of stuff going on, right? Yeah, nerve wracking. I mean, <laughs> I mean it's it's overwhelming and it's nerve wracking, especially waiting for an event. Um, before the prelim, I was there to watch Jordan race earlier in the day, so I was sitting around, sort of just nervous, being a wreck, <laughs> trying to trying to calm down for a long time, and then. Uh, by the second day, it's it's still nerve wracking, which always surprises me because I expect, oh, I've already made it to the finals. This is this is just a, a victory lap, is what we all say. It's a victory lap. It's it's a celebration. Um, I was still nervous going into it, so I'm also just a runner who's very nervous all the time about races. Um, it doesn't really matter what. I'm just I always get in my head about it. But mm. yeah, I mean, afterwards it was really fun though because we got to watch the other championship races and. It was a really good time seeing other people compete. You say you get nervous, but you project an aura of calm, at least from what I could tell. I mean, how, how do you how do you kind of focus in? <laughs> it's really funny you say that because um, I've had people tell me that I'm scary on the starting line because I'm so quiet, but I'm really just so quiet because I'm so scared. <laughs> and, um, I, yeah, I have a friend who said 
that all the Middlebury girls are, are terrified of me because I'm so within myself and I'm, I'm just not talking to anyone and I'm just like, I'm just scared and you know, I don't want to talk to anyone. So I just sort of talk my way through it. I just remind myself that all I have to do is like whatever I can do that day. And you know, Jay always tells us that all that's expected of us is, our, is for us to do our best and to give everything that we have on any given day. And so I just remind myself that uh, all this pressure was really coming from me. <laughs> it wasn't really coming from the outside. And all I had to do is perform to the best of my abilities. And um, yeah, I just, I just sort of try to keep myself, you know, calm and remind myself that at the end of the day, like running is a big part of who I am, but it's not everything that I am. Um, and so, you know, no matter what happened, I would have left the meet. I would have still gotten cheesecake with my coach and Jordan. And um, no matter what would have happened, like the sun would have come up tomorrow. And that's always a great thing to remind yourself when you're getting worked up over a race. <laughs> the sun comes up the next day and also you start practice again uh, today. <laughs> um, so uh, outdoors, what are some goals you have in your mind for this season? Oh, gosh, I haven't even thought about it. It's, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's been, it's been go, go, go for so long. Yeah. And um, just a lot is happening right now. So you know, hoping to hopefully go back to nationals for something. I don't know what it'll be. I mean, I love the 800. It's my baby. So, <laughs> so I'm assuming I'll run some 800s. I maybe get back into high jump, maybe 400 hurdles again, maybe some 1500s. You know, I don't really know what I'm uh, looking to do. I just, you know, on to the next one, I guess. <laughs> see what see what more I can get done this season. I just one more chance to really put myself out there. <laughs> Excellent. So as a senior, I have to ask, you mentioned you obviously, you're more than a runner, you're a Bates student. What have you been studying here at Bates? What are you kind of looking forward to after you graduate? Yeah, so I'm a politics major and I have minors in Spanish and history. Um, I want to go to law school eventually. Um, and I just, not yet. <laughs> I'm, you know, still still working through getting through thesis. Um, and that's taken I've been doing it year long I'm doing an honors thesis so oh. it's just it's a lot of work <laughs> so I haven't really had time to see what I'm going to do next I definitely want to end up um, probably hopefully in Boston just because I have a lot of friends there and um, maybe join a track club there too as well hopefully I can that's another goal for outdoors I want to get down a qualifying time for a track club um, so I can run post-grad which mm. would be great um, looking to do probably paralegal work or um, investigation I worked with investigators this summer so we'll see where it takes me <laughs> interesting and you said honors thesis so what's that on yeah so i'm writing um about how attorneys um, strategically appeal to jur jury decision making processes through using emotions oh. um yeah emotional appeals so i'm winding down on that i just have you know a few few more chapters to go a couple couple more chapters to go <laughs> and then i'm in oral argumentation to do so yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And so, um, wait, a lot of Bates alums in Boston, right? That's kind of yeah, yeah. I mean, my closest friends are people who live, who were on the team, and they now live in Boston. So I spent my summers visiting some of my best friends down in Boston and just got a feel for it. And I'm from New Hampshire originally, so it's not too far from home, and I would love to see myself there in the future. Excellent. So any other thoughts you want to share about NCAAs we haven't got to talk about? I mean, just thanking everyone for their support along the way. I had so many teammates reach out to me for good luck and for congratulations, and course to my coach for preparing me adequately for it and you know sticking with me and dealing with me for five days with us um and of course my teammate Jordan as well for her support while we were there and yeah that's really all I got <laughs> awesome Elise Lambert all American 800 meters thanks so much thank you the men's lacrosse team dropped a pair of games to Western New England and Trinity last week but sophomore Will Masterson continues to put together a strong season for Bates. The lefty attacker leads the Bobcats in goals with seven through four games and is tied for the team lead in assists with four. He tallied a hat trick against Western New England and followed that up with a team high three points against the Bantams. And Will Masterson is our male Bobcat of the week. Well, Will, let's talk about growing up in Maine, York, Maine, almost in New Hampshire. Uh, there, uh, near the ocean. How'd you get, first get started playing lacrosse? Um, I was first introduced to lacrosse by a family friend um, who was starting a lacrosse program in York, um, second grade. Um, and first practice I went, um, didn't love it at first, um, but it only took a week for me to fall in love with the sport, and I've loved it ever since, and haven't stopped. What made the sport something that you fell in love with? I think you have to be an athlete in a, in a variety of ways on the field and um, lacrosse um, kind of you have to be in shape in a bunch of different ways you have to be able to run you have to have good hands um, good vision when you got into high school when did you start thinking I could play this in college it's always been a dream of mine to be a college lacrosse player and I kind of set that goal for myself at a young age and um, kind of was committed um, to it 
um, all throughout middle school and high school. I, I knew I wanted to be a college lacrosse player. Um, so I was dedicated to the sport. Um, it was fun for me. Working was fun for me. Um, and I never really fell out of love with it. Um, constantly watching film, playing wall ball, trying to go to every practice I could, where, wherever that was, whether it was travel team or um, just high school ball. You wanted to play in college. How did Bates get on your radar? Well, when I was starting my recruiting process, honestly, it didn't have that many looks. Um, I went to a few prospect days, but I didn't know how the recruiting process worked. So I, I attended the CBB, um, Colby Bates and Bowden prospect day. Um, I talked to Coach Lasagna. Um, he said he was interested in offering me a spot on the 2024 re- recruiting class. I knew I wanted to be close to home, and I thought Bates, being one of the better schools in my area, I thought it would be a perfect fit for me because being from Maine, growing up in Maine, I love this state. Um, I love everything it has to offer. Skiing and surfing are a big part of my life, so I wanted to make sure I could continue doing that in college, and I think Bates was the perfect fit for me academically and athletically. Terrific. Were you aware at the time of the success the lacrosse team had had in like previous seasons? Yeah. Um, I being in high school um, in 2017, um, mm-hmm. watching. I think there was like a one week where Bates was the number one team in the country, and um, I was like, "Wow, um, a college team from Maine is number one in the country." And that's when Bates kind of got on my radar and said, "Well, this is definitely a feasible option for me, and um, I think I could play here." and So I'm going to strive to do my best to see what I can do to get into this school. And then last year, obviously, a weird year to be a first year. Um, Got a few games in, but not not many. Uh, What was that experience like from your perspective? For sure. Yeah. I mean, coming into college, like I had no idea what my role would be um, as a player. Um, I'm a left-handed attackman. And um, last year we had three. Um, one of those was a senior captain who um, who had unfortunately had to sit out the season because of concussions. I kind of got a jump start and had to be thrown into the offense right away, um, which was challenging for me. But, I mean, I wouldn't take anything back from that. I love that. Um, and the more experience I can get and grow as a lacrosse player is something I'm always looking to do. Obviously, it's a young team this year, right? I mean, a lot of guys um, are sophomores like yourself. There's first years playing, um, and even the juniors aren't that experienced because of the past two seasons. So what are some of the goals you have in your mind of how the team can kind of grow throughout the year? I think it comes down to everybody working hard to make our team as, as a whole better. And I know that we have the talent to do so and I think it just comes down to putting in the work and executing come game day. Obviously the NESCAC, you know, some pretty great lacrosse. What what I mean, how's it compared to like your high school competition? It must be like night and day. <laughs> yeah, um uh, going to high school in Maine um and playing lacrosse was a little interesting just because I was playing outside of my high school t- um team and I I knew what the competition was like uh, nationally. Mm. So playing um for York High School was to- totally a fun time, but um, I knew I could. Uh, I knew there was better competition out there, and I was constantly working because I knew I would face that at the next level. But yeah, the transition from high school to college was a little bit hard, just because of the, the fast pace of the game. Um, I had to adjust, and it, and it really did take me some time. I was not um, a natural at it, but um, once I kind of got into the flow, I um, had to work on a lot of things. But once it clicks for you. Um, it's it's so much more fun playing at the college level. And then you mentioned you're a lefty attacker. Um, for people who aren't maybe like lacrosse experts or anything, take us through what that role is for you. Yeah, so um, I'm a left-handed attackman. Um, I would say it's one of the more rare positions in lacrosse. Most people are right-handed. Mm. Um, and, of course, I have bias, but I, I think it's the best position in lacrosse. <laughs> um, so um, I'm on the left wing on the attacking end. Um, I try to get the ball and score as often as possible or assist my teammates for that. And overall, just an offensive player looking to win games. Chance this weekend to play two games back-to-back at a neutral site. Uh, it kind of, I guess it's kind of a big, like I, don't, I, I wouldn't call it a tournament, but like a big event. Uh, what has Coach Lasagna said about this weekend coming up you have? I mean, we have two really tough competitors coming up this weekend, but we have a whole week um, to work on the things we need to um, work on and coaches just um, making sure we're excited to play these teams and making sure we're ready um, 
and yeah, the team is just really excited to get there and compete as best as we can. What are you working on in your game specifically? The thing I'm working on most in my game is making sure um, all of my teammates are involved with the offense and um, making sure that I'm making I'm making the right looks every time, um, making sure I'm helping out my teammates in the best way possible, always communicating with them if I can do anything better um, because I want to be a team player and make everyone else on the field better. And, yeah, I just love communicating with anyone about what I can do better, what other people can do better. So, yeah, I think communication is a big part of that. Great. Well, any other thoughts you wanted to share about, you know, your time at Bates so far and uh, things you're looking forward to uh, going forward? I'm just excited to see how the rest of the season goes. Um, excited to get hopefully a first win under our belt. Just excited to compete as best as I can throughout the rest of the season. All right, Will Masterson, thank you so much for joining us on the Bobcast. Really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you for having me. Bates Swimming and Diving is at the NCAA Championships in Indianapolis this week where the Bobcats will compete in a multitude of events from Wednesday through Saturday. Head coach Peter Casares previews the meet, which 13 Bobcats qualified for, the most in program history. It's an honor, really, like to, to know that we've built the program up to bring a squad this big and to have some options um, should anything come up, which already has. Um, it is it is good to know that we have the depth to kind of handle that. Um, we also have trained really well for the last month. And I think, you know, having 13 people in the water all pushing each other has been a huge advantage um, and is really good for the program as a whole in terms of getting us ready to go fast again. I mean, the majority of um, Division three athletes that make it to nationals, that was the goal of making it. Um, and so it's, it's about staying the same time and, and not getting slower for, for many. Um, and I think we have a mentality of, oh, we're going to go there and go faster. And it's because they're seeing themselves do things in practice. They're pushing each other there. Uh, there's so many times that, um, their faster teammates are pushing them too. So the whole entire program's kind of, um, has a mentality of getting better. And I think numbers help us with that. Um, and it's been kind of the goal since I've got here is don't send a couple individuals, get relays there, get a group there um, and go and, and make an individual sport team oriented. Certainly. And you mentioned something's already come up. Do you mind sharing what's going on? Yeah. Um, Wednesday or Thursday last week, our butterfly or Haleo mm -hmm. um, dislocated her shoulder in practice. Um, and, um, she's in a sling now and told she shouldn't swim for the next, uh, three months. So, um, we are going to have to rearrange from some relays. Now I had to pull her from the meet. Um, she's coming though, to support and cheer us on and, and she looked great and everything was going awesome. So my heart, you know, breaks for her at this point. Um, but she's going to take, uh, the advantage of the, of the opportunity to come out here and, and learn from it. Um, we're going to move Grace Wanger into our butterfly legs on the um, on the relays, um, and then we're going to just make some shifts. Susie Reichman will go on to our um, 400 medley relay, where since Grace was the freestyler on that, now she's the butterflyer. Um, and we're actually going to just pull Grace from the 100 freestyle. She was seated 48th in it, and so we decided that's one that we can pull her from. Um, if she did improve and get, you know, 16th, 15th place, that'd be a point or two. If our relays are faster, it's double the points. So um, if we move up three or four spots because she's on a relay, then we're talking about a 10 point swing. So um, we looked at a lot of things. We actually did some racing the last Saturday with our tech suits on um, to see where people were out and see if people could step into new roles. Um, and when it was all said and done, we walked away with kind of a new plan for our relays and some confidence that we're just as good, um, even with the changes. Yeah, Grace Wenger obviously has been really great in the freestyle this year in her rookie year in collegiate swimming, but uh, the butterfly as well, that's another good event for her then, it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, she was our butterflyer on most of our um, relays throughout the year. The 200 medley relay um, came up in every dual meet, and um, Halle had some shoulder issues in the first half of the semester, or the first half of the season, first semester. Um, and she built back over our training trip. And then she um, really just popped some amazing times in the last two weeks of the season. Um, and we talked about her kind of building up to that moment after um, some of her injuries. And then her shoulders just, you know, pulled a, pulled a fast one on us one more time, threw us one more curveball. Um, and so uh, sliding Grace back into um, a relay that she's fairly comfortable with, um, and then knowing that she's got the chops to handle a hundred butterfly too, based on her hundred, 200 and 500 freestyle endurance. Um, well, we think things could go well and we're going to learn.
It's yeah. going to be kind of like a, you know, our first ever relay with Grace Swimming Butterfly in the 400 medley, and let's see how it goes. Yeah, certainly. And then, um, you know, it's an interesting combination. You have some seniors who have been to nationals before, but it's mostly uh, rookies, right? I mean, it's a, it's a young group, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, <laughs> we have uh, three, we have four seniors, Andrew Hall and three women, Susie, Caroline, and Maya. And Susie, Caroline, and, and Maya are the only three out of the 13 that have ever been to nationals before. Um, and uh, I was talking with a Denison coach while I was on the pool deck today. Um, and his team has been top three in the country the last couple of years that there's been nationals. All 16 of his women have never been before. Um, and so <laughs> it's it's a rewash for almost everybody. So people that are that are traditional powerhouses are bringing people that have never gone to the meet before, all freshmen and sophomores um, or juniors that hadn't made it in the past. And so um, actually juniors, the junior squad made it, but never got to go to the meet. So um, it, it is it is a lot of fresh faces. Um, it is a phenomenal kind of um, benefit for us to know that we have three senior women on this team that have done it before and seen what we've done and, and know how to handle it. Um, and they'll just lead the way um, and they, they keep themselves calm and collected and they they go about their work and they are successful. So I can't wait for them to lead again one last time. Yeah, it's interesting. Like Nathan Barry, it seems like he's been here for a long time because he was impact swimmer from the start, but he's never actually been to nationals, which is wild to me. <laughs> yeah, um, it is. It's I'm so happy for him right now, making it back again as a junior and not having it kind of unravel after the COVID two seasons and everything. Um, it's also it's also just blows my mind that our one of the most talented athletes in Bates history is only going to get two shots at nationals um, and the first one is always a little bit, um, you know, eye-opening, stressful, um, a learning curve. Luckily for us, Barry's been to national meets at the Y level before he came to Bates. So he's seen some really great swimming um, in some really pressure packed situations. Luckily for us, we're in the NESCAC where if you can swim in the top eight with a NESCAC, you're getting a national level feel. Um, and a lot of the people will look the same to him as he's stepping behind the blocks um, there's always the Kenyan Denison's Emery Johns Hopkins of the world MITs that we don't see and they show up with their crazy fast times and their depth. Um, but um, overall, we know, we swam Williams, we saw Tufts, um, Amherst, Khan, like all these teams have such great athletes, Bowden. Um, so it's really nice uh, to get to this meet with a little bit of experience and so that the pressure of a national meets not so intense. And don't forget, folks, Nathan Bear will be a guest on the Great Day to Be a Bobcat live stream on Wednesday. Uh, may have been pre-recorded, but we'll be chatting with him then. And Coach, I mean, I've, I've asked Nathan this, I've asked Andrew Hall this. It seems like D3 has never been faster. What's your theory behind this? Um, I think um, it's a little bit deeper. I think there's a, um, I think there's a, there's some athletes out there that stuck around for their fifth year or um, took a year um, off a gap year and then are coming back um, with some training under their belt. But I think even more so is the fact that um, everyone's hungry, hungry to return. Like the sport of swimming is, is a, it is a, it is a constant battle with the dark night of the soul. I mean, you are just going to a wet, cold pool nine times a week to put yourself through pain and know that the best way to go fast is to go towards the agony and the pain and get comfortable with it. And so when you're a, a college swimmer and you've been doing that for six, seven years in a row with a season that usually lasts nine to 10 months, it is, it, you, you start to lose, you know, your vision or your desire or the excitement for it um, because you're starting to plateau and you're not dropping every single time. And it takes even more work and more commitment and more sacrifice and how much can an 18 to 22 year old really do that? Like without thinking about all the stuff that they're missing out on. Um, and then COVID hit and they missed out on swimming for a year and a half. They missed out on dual meets. They missed out on invites. They missed out on championships. And so I think at some level, obviously the trainings paid off the depth and the, and the, and the population growth in the sport, whatever you want to say, even the Olympic year just happened. So people are jazzed up, but I think people want to be here. And they want to swim and they and they're not taking it for granted and they're going after it and they're they're just lit up and ready to go and they're just taking advantage of every opportunity instead of thinking up oh, here it is again i hope it works out it's like i'm gonna make this work and and that's a different attitude and that can lead to some breakthroughs 
On the women's side, one of the headliners this year, because she's a first year, Sophie Cassily, uh, breaking every backstroke record on the women's side in her rookie season uh, coming in. Uh, first of all, where'd you find Sophie Cassily? How did you get her to come to Bates? And uh, what is her ceiling right now? I mean, the sky seems to be the limit, right? Yeah, I, I avoid ceiling talks a lot. Okay. Um, you <laughs> Fair know, enough. and and it's, and I probably, I don't know. I, I like being surprised. And I think yeah. that's where we, that's that's where we kind of live is like, um, what are you capable of? And, and and I need to see more of Sophie Castley, to be honest with you. Like this year has been um, a, a phenomenal year watching her train and watching her do things in practice and in dual meets. And, and Vanessa and I kind of went, you know, these things are possible. I thought she could break two minutes in the 200 back. I thought she could be um, 55 in the 100 back. Um, but going 55 two and 157 instead of 159 is 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 eye opening, and so it's good to be surprised that way. Um, how does she perform at the national meet after having those big breakthroughs? We're going to learn a lot this weekend. Um, and you know, I told her, I go, your first job here at nationals is not to not to be third like you're ranked. It's to come back top eight and score at night. You know, like find out what it takes to be top eight, and then if you're top eight then let's see if we can do some damage in that heat at night. Um, and if we miss out on top eight, we have to learn from that and be, and come back next year and go, okay, we were seated third, we're seated top eight. We got to, we got to stay there. What do we have to do and, and, and everything. So the great thing with Soph is, um, and our, and you know, any of our freshmen that are on this at this meet is they're going to get three more chances. Um, and that feels like gold to me right now after seeing our, our seniors, um, make it their freshman year and then not make it back until the senior year after what happened. So we're going to learn a lot and do that. So if came from New Hampshire, um, we reached out to her. She, she responded well. We got her here for a visit and we did the COVID-19 recruiting. We Zoomed with her. We, um, we found out she was on campus. So we walked outside um, six feet apart with our masks on. Um, I don't know if we could even tell if we were smiling and having a good time together, but um, it kind of connected and she felt right about Bates and um, we knew that she had some talent. Um, we, we just didn't know, like a little bit of this is, you know, just, this was luck. This was us going, she's got fast times and we could use another backstroker to go along with Gabby smart and it would be a great training partner. So let's put some effort into this one and see where it takes us. And she had a pretty decent senior year, um, but everybody was kind of on hold that year. So um, we're seeing things that we didn't expect, and we're going to just, you know, chop this one up to a lot of good karma and a lot of good work over the last 15 years. And we got ourselves a special one that um, broke a legend's record in her freshman year. Um, so it shows you kind of where she's at. And then you'll see where she wants to go. You know, what does Sophie want to do? How fast does she want to get? And what does she think is the next step for her? Are there any particular events, because um, you're swimming so many of them here at National because there are so many uh, uh, representatives or baits, any particular events that you're uh, really excited to see more, more so than others, perhaps even? Um, no, not, not really, because um, we're not, we're, we're spread out pretty evenly throughout all the events. Like, you know, we do have, an, it's nice to have three women in the 500 um freestyle with with grace being invited and then our two distance swimmers getting to swim that event since they were invited in the mile um it's really special that we have two milers going to the meet i mean that's a that's a that's a tough event to get anybody to swim let alone have two qualify for nationals on your team um so having them train together the last uh, month i think um is going to lead to some good performances and then after that you know we've got andrew hall in the two i am we've got nate barry in the 50 free um, Gibbons, I'm, look, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in the 50 free along with her 100 breaststroke. Uh, can she improve in her 200? But, you know, you let Wenger in the five and the two and um, Castley in the backstrokes or relays are where they're at. Um, I looked over all the events and we have someone in almost every single event um, throughout the course of the weekend. Um, and all of them are all of them are exciting to me. Um, but, um, our, probably our biggest day is the second day. We have the most events happening. Um, Grace Wenger is going to have a heck of a day cause she's on two relays plus the 200 free. So when the net day's over, she'll have some six events in one day, which is just a monstrous lineup for her. So, um, we'll see a lot of action in that day. Um, we also have, you know, Andrew Hall in the 200 free trying that event out and, um, I think Gibbons is in the breaststroke that day. And so we've got, we've got a lot of happening on day two of the meet, which is Thursday. Awesome. Yeah. We'll make sure to watch for that. And also uh, Grace Wenger, her twin sister 
uh, is at St. Lawrence, right? And I believe the NCAA is going to do a story on that. That's really exciting. I mean, uh, how excited her, is she going to compete against her sister or are those different events? No, they both qualified in the 200 okay. freestyle. Okay, yeah. nice. <laughs> so it's great. Um, so they'll both be in that same event. And um, uh, it's just really a cool a, a cool kind of scenario here where they went different places and they, they have some similarities in their freestyle as one of their strengths. Um, and, you know, I don't think, I can't remember the last time St. Lawrence brought um, a swimmer to the national meet. Um, so this is a really big moment for their program and their athlete gets to come to the meet and, and we're just going to embrace her and have her sit with us and make sure she feels like part of our group too. Um, and it will be really awesome to, to have them on the pool deck with us um, and to see Grace and her sister um, kind of tackle things and, and, and go at it again like they probably did in high school. Excellent. And then, well, I guess any other thoughts you wanted to share about the meet coming up this week and uh, what people uh, should watch out for when they watch the live feed here on the internet? Yeah, I, I think we are we are going to kind of go back to our roots and just say, hey, what we came here to do is um, score some points for the college. Um, it's not necessarily about what time you go or how fast you go. It's did you make it back at night? Are you going to be able to, to score some points in the evening? Um, we really are hoping our relays on the women's side are finishing 10th, 11th and better the entire weekend in every event. We're just, we're trying to break through to that. Like, Hey, we are a top eight relay team program. Um, and so if we're going to be top 10 in this country, we have to have our relays finish top 10 and have some of them squeak into the top eight. Um, and it's just so competitive and deep and talented in this division now. So that's a tall order and we're going to see how close we get to that. So we're looking for relays that finish in the top 12, top 10, preferably over and over and over again. We're looking for night swims. We're hoping that, you know, Hall and Barry come back at night and score points for the men um, and make their presence known at the national level. Um, and we're hoping that it's not just relays that come back at night, that Gibbons make us, makes it back and, and Castley makes it back and Wenger makes it back. And we score some extra points individually in terms, um, in addition to our relays. And if we do that, I think we'll be pretty happy with the experience, learn a lot from it and be prepared for um, a really bright future too. All right, Peter Casares, thank you so much for joining us live from uh, Indianapolis as the NCAA championships get going uh, this week. Thanks again. You bet. Anytime. Have a great one and go Bobcats. It's a short Bobcast this week as your fearless host is off to Beverly, Massachusetts to help keep the stats for the women's lacrosse team's neutral site game against Skidmore Tuesday evening at 5 p.m. Check out GoBatesBobcats.com and the Bates Bobcats mobile app for all the latest Bates athletics news and scores. And join us next Tuesday for another episode of the Bates Bobcast. Bye.